Dirtle Magic. Thank you for tuning in to Dirtle Magic. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell if you like the content you see here today, and leave a like and share the video with someone you might think is interested. Leaving those likes really helps us out, but another way to help us out is by using our TCG Player affiliate link below. If you're looking for singles, sealed product, or gaming accessories, please consider using our link to support the channel. We also have some playmats at inkgaming.com. Go ahead and hit the link in the description to check those out. Alright, let's grab some spells and dirtle with some magic. Hello and welcome back to Dirtle Magic. Today we're playing some... Jadzi, Oracle of Arcavios, and Journey to the Oracle. Looking at our opening hand, we do have a few lands. Uh, no ramp, though, so let's go ahead and mulligan. New hand, unfortunately just as bad, so we'll have to mulligan one more time. Another hand. I mean, we could risk it, but why does it keep giving me command beacon? One more mulligan. Hey, look, lands and ramp. That works for me. Let's go ahead and keep. Displace and Greaves to the bottom of the library. We'll keep the lands and the search and the Archaeomancer. Our first opponent is Ramos Dragon Engine, 6 for a legendary artifact creature dragon, 4-4. Four, four. Flying, whenever you cast a spell, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it for each of that spell's colors. Remove 5-1-1 one, one counters from it. Add white, white, blue, blue, black, black, red, red, green, green to your mana pool. Activate only once each turn. And Dotha Triome into play for them. Our next opponent is a partner pairing of Tana the Bloodsower and Tevish Zot Doom of Fuz. I always have to say it that way. Shelter Thicket into play for them. Chavis Thought is a Planeswalker that can be your commander for 4 black and 4 loyalty. Plus 2, create two zero one black thrill creature tokens. Plus 1, you may sacrifice another creature. Planeswalker, if you do, draw 2 cards, then draw another card if the sacrifice permanent was a commander. Minus 10, gain control of all commanders. Put all commanders from the command zone on the battlefield under your control. Partner, of course. Does come to our turn real quick. Let's just go ahead and play Command Tower and pass it off to our opponents. The secondary partner, or the other partner, I suppose, is Tana the Bloodsower. 2 red green, 2-2, two, two, legendary creature elf druid, trample. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, create that many 1-1 one, one green sapling creature tokens, partner. Our last opponent with a sandstep citadel into play is Dorn the Siege Tower. White, black, green for a legendary 0-5 tree folk shaman. Each creature assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. Ramos' turn sees an evolving wilds into play and cracked. So our commander, the front side is 6 blue blue for a legendary 5-5 human wizard. Discard a card, return this to its owner's hand, and magecraft. Whenever you cast or copy an instant sorcery spell, reveal the top card of your library. If it's an a card, you may cast it by paying 1 rather than paying its mana cost. If it's a land card, put it onto the battlefield. The back side is Journey to the Oracle, 2 green green for a sorcery. You may put any number of land cards from your hand onto the battlefield. Then if you control 8 or more lands, you may discard a card. If you do, return it to your hand. Over on the partner player side, we have a swamp followed by Bitter Blossom. To our turn, Temple of Mystery. Um, now let's go ahead and do a forest and do far seek. Go ahead, get an island onto the battlefield and pass it off. So the idea behind this deck is to get to that land count and then cast big fatties off the top. Unfortunately, because I like to do budget constraints, we don't have anything like scroll rack, senses, divine top, stuff like that. We do have a little bit of scrying the deck, a few look at the top card, but nothing spectacular like worldly tutor or mystical tutor would be fantastic with this commander. Unfortunately, those are a bit out of the price range I like to use for decks. To adorn the siege tower, we have wooded bastion into play, followed by the birth of Miletus. Let's see what it does. Search your library for a basic planes card, reveal it, put it to your hand, then shove your library. Chapter two, create a zero four colorless artifact creature token with defender. Chapter 3, gain 2 luck. Over to Ramos' turn, we have Frontier Bivouac into play. That's it for Ramos, over to the partner player. Bear Blossom triggers for the first time this game. We have a Morph into play. Okay. Interesting. I should note for Morphs and Manifest cards, you do have to keep track of which ones are first, second, third, and so forth. It is in the rules. Comes our turn, we get a Pathway Land. Hmm. It's okay. Let's go ahead, play the Temple of Mystery, scry something away, see what's on top. We have Displace. So we did have that in our original hand. It's good with the Archaeomancer. It does do, like, a tiny combo, but not infinite in here. Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be viable right now. Let's go ahead and put it on the bottom. And then let's play Lifecrafter's Bestiary and pass it off to our opponents. Doran's turn. We have a second chapter coming up. They're going to get an 4 wall. Snow-covered planes in play for them. We have Doran the Siege Tower coming down, so that's technically 9 power on board for them already. Over to Ramos. 8 cards in hand after the draw. Everybody's sitting kinda good on the hand size except for us, unfortunately. Hopefully we'll hit some card draw pretty quick here. Sword of Light and Shadow coming down for Ramos. 
that's not my favorite. Sacred Foundry also coming down into Blight Aft. Oh, and I'm sorry, I missed. We have a companion to Ramos, Gigantha the Wellspring. Four and Gruel for a 5 5 Elemental Elf companion. No card in your starting deck has more than one of the same mass symbol in its cost, so nothing with like white, white, or black, black. Tap, add Wooberg. This mana can't be spent to pay generic mana costs. Man, I haven't seen a companion in forever. Over to the partner player, and they are playing Tana the Bloodsower. We have Fairy Rogue, his sacrifice to the Gift of Doom. So, the enchanted creature now has Death Touch and Indestructible. Tana herself also has Trample. No first strike, though, which is pretty good, because that would make it even more dangerous. To our turn, we get to scry one. Yeah, we don't need any more lands right now. What we need is something to get something else. We get Nezahal Primal Tide. I mean, it'll be good later. We'll play the pathway green side up, if you will. Let's go ahead, get a blocker, draw with the Lifecrafter's Bestiary, and get back Farseek. We get a forest. We'll return Farseek. And we'll pass it off. Indirect buff to Archaeomancer. It's a 2-2, technically speaking. To Dorn's turn, they gain two life. Gargoyle Castle into play. So you can sacrifice it for five to make a three four with flying. Archer's Parapet. So Defender and one black tap. Each opponent loses one life. It is an 0-5 though, which is technically a 5-5 at the moment. So Dorn says they cannot attack if they have Defender, but there are numerous effects that allow them to do so. Dorn is on the attack, smashing into Ramos' face. Damage is good, down to 35, up to 5, Commander. That's the end of Dorn's turn. Going to roll over to Ramos. Sultai Charm, choose 1. It is draw 2 cards, then discard a card. They discard the Sword of Sinew and Steel. Alright, so no destroying our Planeswalkers. We do have 1 or 2 in the deck. And destroying Artifacts. Okay, so yeah, I can live with that. It doesn't seem terribly viable at the moment anyway. Elder Omri's Call. Okay, they gotta look for a creature. Glint Eye Nephilim. Didn't see that coming. So this is a non-white or a blue, black, red, green. Some people consider it a pseudo legend. 2-2 two, two, Nephilim. What just come down to the player? Draw that many cards. One, discard a card, it gets 1-1 one, one till end of turn. Deep Forest Hermit coming down. Gonna be a bunch of squirrely madness. Madness, I tell you. And they're two twos. It does have vanishing though, so they're only two twos for a bit. We have an attack ten the blood sower is actually off into Dorn. Okay, that's interesting. Does have Death Touch. Maybe they're trying to force it. Yeah, so the wall will die. They are intercepting. Does have Death Touch and Indestructibility. I should remind everyone. One damage gets through. They get one sap. To our turn, we'll scry one. And that is the interaction between... Ooh, card draw. We'll keep that. That is the interaction between Death Touch and Trample. You only have to assign one damage to destroy them. And then Trample, the rules carried over for the rest. Let's go ahead and play a forest. Let's play Farseek. Statistically, it gives us one less land to draw. And then Harmonize. Okay, we get Nissa Essence Flux and Rapid Hybridization. Let's pass it off. Essence Flux will be good later. Over to Dorn's turn. Let's see what they can do with it. Seven cards in hand after the draw. Gatekeeper Vine coming down. O2, technically 2 2. Defender, they get to search for a land. Or a gate card. It's a snow covered swamp. Temple of Milady into play. They'll scry one. Dorn on the attack again. Off into us this time. That is unfortunate. We could block now, but I do want to save something to protect Nissa later on. So let's just go ahead and take it for now. We take five down to 35, up to five commander from Dorn. Crashing drawbridge coming down for the Dorn player. Taps to give creatures haste. Three visits for Ramos on their turn. They'll go get a forest card. We have a breeding pool into play. Glint Eye Nephilim is coming down for the Ramos player. Over to the partner player, Deep Forest Hermit will trigger. It will vanish a little bit from existence. Tavish Zot Doom of Fools coming down for that player. They're sacrificing another creature to draw a couple of cards. Tana on the attack, off into the Dorn player again. That's fine with me. No blocks this time. They're up to three commander damage from Tana, down to 39. Tana does make two more saplings. We scry an island, let's put it on the bottom. Omen of the Sea God. Alright, so that's basically there for scrying and drawing. Play an island for the turn. Then what do we want to do? We could do a journey to the Oracle, discard something, and then get it back to our hand to set for the next turn. But I think for now, let's just go ahead and play Omen of the Sea God. We get to scry two and then draw. We'll put the Vizier on top. We draw said Vizier. And we will play the Vizier. 
we will go ahead and pay to draw the guard. No attacks again, and we'll pass it off. Dorn's turn sees an overgrown battlement into play. Dorn on the attack again, off into us. Man, that's unfortunate. All right, uh, let's go ahead and block. And then we will blink it out with Essence Flux. It'll come back into play. We get a trigger. Uh, at this point, I think Harmonize is our best option. More cards is always good. No damage gets through. Crashing Drawbridge is giving creatures haste until end of turn. Not entirely sure why. Then we have Overgrown Battlement into Tower of Champions. Tower creature gets six, six tones a turn for eight mana. I'm so amused by seeing it right now. Over to Ramos's turn. Six cards in hand after the draw. Still got a Sword of Light and Shadow on the battlefield with Glintai Nephilim. Unfortunately, you have to hit somebody with it. They do have the sword, but don't know. Also, I think we need more four color commanders. I personally don't like the partners myself, so it's just a personal bias. Sylvan Reclamation getting the basic land cycling. Also, they need to do the enemy colored pairs of these. That's a swamp in the play. Tome of the Guild Pact. Whenever you cast a multicolored spell, draw a card, tap to add any color of mana. Over to the partner player. Deep Forest Hermit is going to vanish a little bit more. Tavish's Thought is being activated again to sacrifice another creature. They go ahead and sacrifice the Deep Forest Hermit. Interesting. Talani Summoner. All star in my Omnath deck. Do not underestimate this card. Birds of Paradise also coming down for the partner player. That's a Farseek. Stomping grounds into play. Ashburns gets a basic land cycling. Quite the turn over there for the partner player. Lots of small creatures. Really hoping they don't have something like Triumph of the Hordes. That'd be very bad. We have a lot of things attacking. Let's see where they're all going. Alright, so one token, two into us rather. One token into the Ramos player, and then we have Tana back into the Doran player. All the tokens fly, so we'll be taking the damage. Damage is good way down to 33. Tana did more damage over to the Doran player. They're up to 5 commander, down to 37, and Ramos is down to 32. Comes to our turn, the scry is a thing. We'll keep the giant Adiphage on top. Skullwinder on top of our library. That's interesting. Is there something we can do for anyone? Nothing besides Doran, I don't think. Let's play Harmonize. We get Island, Pondrify, and Skullwinder. Let's play an Island. Swift boot Boots on top. Uh, let's keep up the removal and play Skullwinder. We will not draw a card. We'll get back the Essence Flux. Nothing like blocking and never having anything happen to you. Plus, it'll work with Skullwinder. Doran gets their enchantment back. Let's pass it off. At our end step, we have an Archer's Parapet activation. We each lose a life. The opponent's to Dorn anyway. We're down to 32, 31 for Ramos, 34 for the partner player. Over to Dorn's turn. Let's see if they can ever activate that tower. Interested in knowing. Birth of Melita's coming back down. It earns the battlefield. Chapter 1 will trigger. They get a basic planes card revealed and put it to their hand. I do believe they already played a land for this turn, but if not, I imagine it'll be the land they play. Dorn on the attack it is off into Tevichzat. Works for me. We have the intercept of many squirrels and a sapperling. They will trade unless Dorne has something up their sleeve. They do. It looks like they're activating the tower. They do. They activate the tower of champions targeting Dorne. It's a 611. Glad that's not coming at us. But we do have mana up for removal just in case. All of the squirrels get smushed. Sapperling down. Dorne survives. No damage gets through to the partner player. Over to Ramos. Five cards in hand after the draw. Still have Glint Eye on the battlefield with a Sword of Light and Shadow. It's Dune Blast. All right, let's see what they're targeting. It doesn't look like they're targeting anything, so I'm going to go ahead and cast Essence Flux on our Kaomancer just to get back the Harmonize. Oh, they choose on Resolution. Good to know. Glint Eye Nephilim is still on the battlefield. Glint Eye Nephilim on the attack, off into the partner player. Both of the commanders, by the way, did survive. Tana is indestructible, and Tevichlot is not a creature. Damage is good. Partner player down to 32. Glint Eye will trigger. They will draw two cards over on Ramos' side. Temple Garden into play, untapped for the Ramos player. They are casting their own Farseek. Alright, we have another Triome into play. It is Zogoth. 
that's it for them. Going to roll over to the partner player. Unfortunately, they'll have six cards in hand after the draw. And Tavish that over here, he's getting close to that minus 10. They also do have the City's Blessing, just for reference. Tana is on the attack, off into the Ramos player. Leaving us alone for now, that's always nice. Just considering we need to get some mass removal in here, perhaps. I don't run Cyclonic Rift, again, due to budget constraints. Damage is good. Ramos down to 27, up to 5 commander. Tana will trigger, they get two more Sapperlings. The Doom of Fools is being activated. They're sacrificing another creature to draw two more cards. We have Kazul, Tyrant of the Cliffs. The only pill forting red card ever to exist, at least with the taxing effects. We do have things like smoke. To our turn, we still have the Swifty Boots. Let's go ahead and keep them on top for now. And we draw them for the turn. Let's harmonize. We get two lands and a Growth Spiral. Okay, interesting. Let's go ahead and play the Growth Spiral first. Put an island onto the battlefield. And a Rampant Growth, okay. Now let's go ahead and cast the backside of our commander, Journey to the Oracle. We may put more land cards into the battlefield from our hand. It'll just be one, and then we would discard Rampant Growth, returning our commander sorcery to our hand, and we'll pass it off there. As far as I'm aware, the ultimate on Tavishzat doesn't take control of our commander from our hand, but I guess we're going to find out, but hopefully not. Over to Dorne's turn, they get an 0-4 Koas Arvac creature wall token again for the second chapter. They are down to four cards in hand after the draw, Dorne getting pretty wiped out by that Dune Blast. Dorne the Siege Tower coming back down for that player. Animate wall, the wall will be animate. It can attack as though it didn't have defender. That was it for Dorne, over to Ramos. They have yet to cast their commander or the companion to the commander. Auspicious Starix. Whenever this creature mutates, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile X permanent cards or X the number of times this creature has mutated, put those permanent cards onto the battlefield. Okay, so their Glintai Nephilim just became a 6-6. That's interesting. And they get to reveal until they hit one permanent card. They get Sword of War and Peace. Still haven't equipped the sword either, which I find interesting as well. Sword of War and Peace would protect them from Tana, so that's pretty good. We have Journey to Eternity coming down for Ramos. Tome of the Guild Pact will trigger to draw them a card. We have an attack. It's often to us, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I guess we're going to have to kill it. I was really hoping not to have to do that. Journey to Eternity will trigger bringing back their creature. Oh, interesting. It brings them both back. That's unfortunate. Sword of War and Peace is being equipped to the Nephilim. Over to the partner player's turn, we have a land into play. Also going to have another Bear Blossom token, which is currently on the battlefield. They are sacrificing another creature in the first main phase to draw two more cards. Annex Harden in the Forge coming down. So when a creature they control dies that's non-token, they get a 1-1 Seder token that can't block. If the power is 4 or greater, they get two of those. Alastra of the Endless Web. Whenever I put a cast an Endless Sorcery spell, sad face. Create a 1-2 creature that has a spider with reach. That's bad for us. We have an attack. Tana off into the Doran player. Still not attacking us, which I can appreciate. Really don't want to deal with the Doran player, I suppose. Damage is good. Doran down to 35, up to 7 commander damage. Tana gets those saps into play. To our turn, we scry Venzer. Could be good to get rid of Tavazat for a second. Don't know what else we'll do with it, though. We'll go ahead and put it on top. Draw it for the turn. We'll go ahead and play Venzer. Might as well bounce something. We'll go ahead and draw a card for that. We draw a Diluvian Primordial. Okay. So, Dune Blast in our future, potentially very soon. We'll get rid of Kozol, actually. Let's see if anyone wants to take advantage of that. Do our dirty work for us, if you will. Okay. Unfortunately, we can't cast the Primordial just yet, so what else do we want to do with the turn? I think let's go ahead and get down Nissa. Nissa, Steward of Elements to the stack. Let's go ahead, plus two and scry two. We get Displace and a Forest. Let's put the Forest on Bomb and Displace on top. And we'll pass it off there. Over to Dorne's turn. We have chapter three. They'll gain two life. Dorne on the attack again into us. No, actually into Tavazat. That works for me. We have one Sapperling on the intercept. Probably learning the lesson from the last time. Then we have Village of Rites. Creature gets sacrificed so they can draw some cards. No damage gets through. Partner player still at 30 life. We have Ivory Tower coming down to the second main. At the beginning of your upkeep, you gain X life for X of the number of cards in your hand, minus four. Two Ramos this turn. Lots of mana. Still haven't cast their commander. Still haven't cast their companion. 
let's see what they're going to do with the turn. Play into the play. Four cards in hand afterward. Brokos Apex of Forever. Hey, I covered that on this channel. Alright, looks like we have a mutation going on. Which one will be on top? I imagine, yep, Brokos has Trample anyway. But the bomb one will trigger. They get revealed until they get two permanent cards. We have Arcane Sanctum and a Nomad Outpost. Kind of a whiff there. Sword of Light and Shadows being equipped to the Nephilim. Alright, we have an attack. Brokos off into Savage Zot. And Nephilim off into the player proper on the partner side. Okay, let's see if things connect. They don't have protection from green on the sword, so they could just chump it with a sapperling. It looks like they are. Alright, damage is good to the sapperling. Tevish Zot down to two loyalty. To the partner player's turn, we have some mana getting tapped down. Creekwood Liege. Alright, at the beginning of your upkeep, you make a 1 1 black and green worm creature token. Other black creatures you control get 1 1, other green creatures you control get 1 1. Because all Tyrant of the Cliffs coming back down. At least we got uh, Tavish Zot knocked back down a little bit. Unfortunately, no other removal at the moment. We have an attack. Tana coming into us. Okay, so we can't destroy it. If we block, we just die anyway. Let's go ahead and save Venzer for now. Use him to blink something later. My apologies, bounce something later. Probably Tana so we can get rid of that enchantment. We take three, five commander damage down to 29. Tana will make three sapperlings. Tevis Zot sacrificing another creature to draw some more cards. To the end step, partner player will have to discard a card. Let's see what it is. They discard a mountain, comes over to our turn. Let's do the scry. It's displaced, knew it was there. Let's keep it on top and draw it for the turn. All right, let's go ahead and scry two with Nissa. Evolution Charm and a Forest. Neither one terribly helpful at the moment, however. We will summon our commander, Jadzi, Oracle of Arcavios. We will not pay to draw a card. And we'll pass the turn there. Keep up this place to save our creatures. At the end of the turn, we have something out of Dorn. Gargoyle Castle will become a creature token instead of a land. It's 3-4 with flying. Over to Dorn's turn. Ivy Tower triggered for the first time, but they gained no life, unfortunately for them. Two cards in hand after the draw. All right, we have some attacks with the Gargo off in the Nissa. That's unfortunate, and Doran off into the Ramos player. We have an ape on the interception into Doran. Should we just throw the Gargoyle? Doesn't do lethal to Nissa without the tower, so I think we'll just let it go for now. Damage is good, Nissa down to one, ape token down. All of Mulch coming down for the Doran player. Feed the pack. At the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice a non-token creature. If you do, create X22 Green Wolf creature tokens where X is the sacrifice creature's toughness. Okay, interesting feed loop there. They are down to zero cards in hand, however. We have a trigger for feed the pack. I imagine maybe they'll wait until they can activate the tower? No, they do not. Door into the graveyard, probably back to the command zone. They have five wolves to block with. Nice. Ramos' turn, lots of mana already being tapped down. Will we see their commander? No, it's another mutating creature. Illumina, Apex of Wishes. We have mutation triggers. So let's see, it'll be the top X, which is three to reveal permanence, and then they also get two. They'll also be able to, whenever this creature mutates, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-permanent card, put onto the battlefield. So they get to reveal that one first. Let's see, Commander Sphere, it looks like it's going to be. And then they have the X one from the bottom, which is you get to look at the top X. Commander Sphere into play. Bring to light Jeskai Charm and Hadana's Climb. Hadana's Climb can get really scary really quickly. Hadana's Climb is, in fact, the card that came into play as well. So, I actually have this in Omnath. At the beginning of your combat on your turn, put one with counter target creature control. Then, if it has three or more, you get to transform it. And it adds one mana of any color, one green blue. Oop, pardon me. It gives something flying. And XX, where X is its power. It can be very detrimental. Commander Sphere gets sacrificed to draw a card. The Dalkin Order is coming down for the Ramos player. To the combat, Hadana's Climb will trigger. All right, that's uh, not the best. Fortunately for them, they are targeting the Nephilim. It does not have protection from green or blue. Also, luckily for us. All right, Nephilim off into us. That is unfortunate. I really didn't want to use the removal on them because of Tana. But if they're going to make us do it, they're going to make us do it. We have a few triggers. 
Arasta will make a token for the partner player, and we get to look at the top card of our library. If it's not land, we can pay one to cast it. It's Ponder. Uh, sure. We'll cast Ponder, and we get to chain off and do another one. It's Galta. Yeah, I think we want to cast that. Lifecaster is the best year we'll trigger. Uh, at this point, I guess let's go ahead and do it. Although, it didn't look like we paid one for the Galta, so I'm very concerned about if it's bugged or not. We get Reality Shift. Finally, some exiling removal. Looking at the top, we have Eternal Witness Forest and Quandrix Apprentice. We'll put a Witness on the top. We will not shuffle, and we will draw a card. It should be the Eternal Witness. There it is. Hybridization will finally go to take down the Nephilim. Luckily, it doesn't look like they have a response. And there it goes. They got another 3-3 token, except this time it's a Frog Lizard. Leave my face alone! Over to the partner player, Creekwood Liege will trigger for the first time this game, giving them some worm. Partner player is attacking again with just Tana. Off into us again. Uh, they do have some cards in hand. A lot of mana locked up otherwise. We could block with Venzer. We do still have Displace. I think let's just let it through one more time. Going to go up to 8 commander damage, down to 26 regular life. Hopefully we are not going to be too badly outmatched with whatever they have in their hand. Damage is good. Up to 6 commander. Down to 26. They get 3 more saps. I guess we were at 5 from Dorn. That makes more sense. Doom of Fools, eating another creature to gain some knowledge. Michael off. That's going to be a lot of death. Michael off eats a small salad. It becomes a 13 13. Very small. Unfortunately, at the beginning of their upkeep, they create that many 1 1 green sapling creature tokens. That'll be 8 of them. Not good. Newscraft Mob also coming down. I do like that card. I think it's a little underpowered for a rare, but it's still pretty good since it replaces itself a bunch. To our turn, we get to scry. It's a forest. Uh, yeah, actually, let's go ahead and put that on top. We do need some more lanes. Go ahead and play that forest. And then let's go ahead and scry two with our planeswalker. We have Haro and Quandrix Apprentice. Uh, neither one my favorite right now. Let's go ahead and put these on bottom. Well, let's cast Eternal Witness. We have a couple of triggers. News Draft Mob. Well, it'll remove a one counter and spit out a zombie. We also get to possibly draw a card. Don't think I'm going to. Let's get back a ponder. And let's go a pondering. We have a trigger from Jadzi. Let's go ahead and pay for it. Or at least see what we have first. It's Lignify. Yeah, let's go ahead and cast it. We'll attach it to Tana. Why not? Tana becomes a tree folk. Alright, we have Brainstorm, Hinterland Harbor, and Enray's Forerunners. We'll put Enray's on top. We will not shuffle. We will draw a card. Swiftwood boots to the stack. Might as well protect our commander a little. And we'll pass it off there. We do need some mess removal to take care of all those tokens. I'm hoping somebody else runs into it. Otherwise, we may have some bad time getting through with our creatures as it is. If we get Nissa up a couple of times to our ultimate to get two 5 5 flyers from our lands, could be okay. Otherwise, we have Endra's Forerunners. Over to Doran's turn. They'll have one card in hand after the draw. Wall of Mulch gets sacrificed so they can draw a card. Join the Siege Tower coming back down for that player. We have a Gargoyle. It's off in the Nyssa. Oh, that is unfortunate. Uh, do we want to do anything about that? We don't really have mana to do too much. Could just do Reality Shift and then keep up Displace for anything else that might attack us. I guess we're going to have to. Bit of wasted removal there. More tokens for the token partner player. And we have a trigger. It's Brainstorm. Yeah, we knew that was there. Let's not cast it. And they get a nice nifty manifest creature token. End of the turn, will they feed the pack? At the end of turn, we have Profane Procession at flash speed. Oh, Exile and Creatures. That's not my favorite. Good thing we have Displaced. Unfortunately, they could probably activate it twice. I'm hoping they get rid of something over there on the partner player's side, but we seem to be getting a lot of ire up because we have Nissa down. Rhythm of the Wild also coming down for the Ramos player. Still haven't seen their commander. They do sacrifice the token, so they got four wolves into play this time. They did sacrifice a creature at any end of turn. Five wolves into play for the Doran player. Over to the Ramos player. Very concerned about that profane procession. I don't like it. I'm still hoping they're shitting it over. Sorry, that sounded like cussing. My bad. Shooting it over to the partner player. But we'll see. They are trying to get rid of our commander. Ah, that's unfortunate. 
Very unfortunate indeed. Let's cast the Displace. We have a couple of triggers. Unfortunately, we can't cast anything off the top. Let's see if they have a response for it. We can just return her to our hand by discarding a card as well. It doesn't look like the Primordial is going to do much work for us this game. It's still Brainstorm, and we can't cast it. We have a trigger. Let's get rid of our Mutate creature. Okay, they will have no legal target for the Profane. They will have to activate again, at which point I guess we have to bounce the commander back to our hand. <sighs> Sad face. Adonis Climb is triggering at combat. To the cleanup step, I imagine they'll keep up the mana for the procession in case they want to use it on something else, or conversely, our commander again. What will they discard though? It will only be one card. Oh, look at all those triggers. And it's search for us Kanta. Unfortunately, I was going to use the displace for on Venzer for Michael Oth, and I keep having to defend us against everybody trying to do things to us, which is turned out not to be the best. To the partner player's turn, at this point they probably have lethal on us and or the Ramos player. Ramos does have seven cards in hand and mana up though, we do not. So this is quite the precarious position for us to be in. Doom of Fools is going to chow down. Tana hits the bin, Annex will trigger. Bastion of Remembrance, uh oh. Oh, Ramos quits the game. Sad face. So if the partner player has that new card where you can, I think it's sacrifice a number of creatures and you draw cards and lose one life, uh, it won't really matter to them so much, but it will matter to us a great deal and possibly even Dorn a little bit. I think this is game. All right, let's see where everything is going. Okay, so Dorn is taking the fires. Nissa is taking a lot of stuff. She's going to go down, and we are taking a number of spiders. Uh, they are two threes. We can block a few. Hopefully, they don't randomly get death touch, but why not? Actually, no, we'll just take it. In case they do get death touch, I don't want to lose Galta necessarily just yet. We do have Enrace Forerunners coming down. Might be something. Deluvian Primordial, unfortunately the only real target it had was that Doom Blast, and that player is gone now. Sad face. Okay, we go down to 16. Dorn doesn't do any blocking. They are down to 29. Second main phase. Let's see if they have a large sacrifice outlet. Ton of the Bullets are coming back down for that player. Just read the chat. Ramos player said that they had to run. Just had to simply leave. All right, well, good game to you. Brainstorm, we'll keep that on top. And I hope you enjoy your day. Okay, unfortunately, we do not get to scry anymore. Our poor Nissa was finally taken down. Let's go ahead and brainstorm. A number of triggers, even more tokens. I was thinking of putting Echoing Truth in here. While they have a bunch of different tokens, still might put it in here. Land card came into play. That's unfortunate. Brainstorm, let's go. We get Wildest Dreams, Command Beacon, and Island. We get to put two cards on the top of our library. Let us do Deluvian Primordial and Nezahal. Command Beacon into play, please. And then let's go ahead and pay for Wildest Dreams. Paid one too many mana there, but that's okay. We're just going to summon a big creature off the top. We will cast Nezahal. We will not pay to draw a card. And we'll cast Displace, and we'll target Venzer and the Eternal Witness. We will cast the Deluvian Primordial. We will not draw a card. We'll simply recast Farseek. Deluvian Primordial does fly, and that's the only reason it's here at the moment. We have Cream of the Crop. Could potentially be good. So Cream of the Crop is an interesting gem. It says, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may look at the top X cards of your library or exit that creature's power. If you do put one of those cards on the top of your library and the rest on the bottom, so we can kind of do like a scrying effect. Let's get an island with Farseek. And we'll displace. We will bounce the Michael off. And with the Eternal Witness, we'll get back to displace. We have Geo going, that's not the best at the moment. 
All right, and let's just end the turn there after we go ahead and equip our commander with some boots because I think everyone's going to be tired of us doing things. And we'll pass it off. Over to Dorn's turn. Hopefully they didn't fall asleep through our turn. Got a little bit complicated there. Having to respond to everything and apply a auto is not the best. Snow Fortress coming down. All right. So this is a card with Defender. It says one gets one zero tone to turn, one it gets a one tone to turn, and one, or sorry, three, it deals one damage to target creature without flying that's attacking you. To the end step, feed the pack will trigger again. Let's see if they're going to do anything with it. They don't this time, still at 10 wolves. That means it's going to roll on over to the partner player. And fortunately, this should be game, I imagine. They could just swarm us with a bunch of things. We are only at 16. Do the partner players turn proper. Two more tokens into play for them. One worm, one fairy. Doom of Fools is getting another lunch snack. Bastion of Remembrance will trigger. Will you lose a life? Down to 15. Doran down to 28. 27 is the new life total for this partner player. Crater Hoof Behemoth. Ah. That's really anticlimactic. Dang. All right. Well, we know some weaknesses in the deck, that's for sure. Fog or Pillfort effects might be good in here. She does want us to cast stuff, so probably the Fog effects, especially if we can get them back with our Chaomancer or Eternal Witness or Skullwinder, what have you. All right, to the attacks, as it were. Everything got, like, to be a 41-41 base, looks like. Oh, nope, I see 140-40 up there. Okay, there's the attack. They're leaving one worm behind on defense. I think we're dead. I'm not even going to process... Oh, wait, what is this? Do we have a fog out of Doran or no? Nope, they're just drawing a card with the Wall of Mulch. Okay, I was going to say maybe it's a fog. All right, well, that's game. Good game to our opponents. Let's see how much damage we take. And we go down to negative 814 because craters. Oh, right, I'm going to give it actually to the Doran player because they stayed through it no matter what. So I appreciate that. And there's the final score on the points. The winner, three points each of the other players won except for us too bad all right let's go ahead take a look at the deck obviously there are some weaknesses that need to be addressed okay here's the deck the idea basically behind it is some recursion cheaper stuff on the bottom of the curve so we can cast stuff for one that it's on the higher end of the curve with some top deck manipulation like i said at the beginning of the video however the problem with the top deck manipulation stuff is sensei's divine top scroll rack stuff like that is very expensive and i do try to keep my decks cheaper rather than use just all the best stuff necessarily however it seems like we're going to have to do something because that one didn't work out so well i'm definitely thinking some more comes into play triggered abilities especially at the top end that could be a lot better galta watts large doesn't do anything when it comes into play we also might need another way to put land cards into play other than just our ramp, maybe just get them out of the deck. We do have a lot of land search. Maybe we just didn't see too much of it. I'm going to play test that some more. As for the top deck manipulation stuff, we do have scry to get stuff out of the way. The problem with Jadzi is that if you scry on your upkeep, it doesn't really affect what she does. And while I do want to put Thassa, God of the Sea in here to get also the unblockable for our large creatures so they can connect if they have an on hit ability, and I'm going to, even if it's a little bit more expensive, is that we need scry after our draw step. So something like Nissa Steward of Elements works really well there, even if it is a little bit more fragile. So I'll probably be looking into stuff like that to increase the viability of the deck, especially if we can get anything else like Anticipate or Brainstorm are really good with this commander. Anyway, that's it for this game. Did make it possibly a little bit too casual, but we'll find out. If you saw any cards that you want to purchase for yourself in paper, sealed product or sleeves to protect all of the glory, please consider using the TCG Player affiliate link in the description below. It helps out the channel, doesn't cost you anything extra. On to the next game, hopefully fixing all those things I talked about. Rather like this commander because you do have to jump through some hoops unless you, you know, you just go infinite and cast your deck for colorless. Bah! In your case, I'll see you for the next game. Stay safe out there.